In section 3.3, we talk about rational functions. So, oh, this is already a typo. Awesome start. A rational function is a function of the form p of x over q of x, where the numerator p of x and the denominator q of x are both themselves polynomial functions. So a rational function is just a polynomial divided by another polynomial. We've seen rational expressions before in the first unit when we talked about um, simplifying or combining different types of rational expressions. A rational polynomial is just a function where you have a polynomial over a polynomial. So recall that the domain of a rational function is just going to be all real numbers such that the denominator is not equal to zero. Right, because polynomials have a domain of all real numbers, so the only place that a rational function might not be defined is when we have a zero in the denominator. So this cannot be zero. So if we wanted to find the domain of this first rational function here, x squared minus 2x plus 1, I don't really care about what's going on in the numerator. It doesn't really matter. What matters is going on in the denominator. So I can factor this. It's a difference of two perfect squares to x plus 1 times x minus 1. And so I know that this function is going to be undefined whenever that denominator is equal to 0. So I need that the denominator, x plus 1 times x minus 1, does not equal 0. This means x cannot be equal to negative 1, and x cannot be equal to positive 1. So our domain is going to be all real numbers except negative 1 and positive 1. All right, what about in part b? If we wanted to find the domain of this function 2x minus 7 over x squared plus 4, again, I need that denominator x squared plus 4 to be non-zero. Well, notice I can't really factor this, right? The numerator still doesn't matter, but I can't factor what's in the denominator x squared plus 4. So, you could use the quadratic formula if you wanted to, to find any zeros of this function, or you can just say that our denominator, our q of x function, x squared plus 4, we, what we know from quadratic functions is that the graph of this is the x squared graph, right, remember this is x squared, but shifted up 4 units. So it looks like this. This function never crosses the x-axis. It has no zeros. That means the denominator, x squared plus 4, is never equal to, to 0. The denominator is never equal to 0. And so that means that f of x has a domain of all real numbers. We can kind of reason through that anyway. Whatever you plug in here, x squared is going to be greater than or equal to 0, because when you square any number, it makes it positive, or it's 0 and it's still 0. So when you add 4 to that, your outputs will always be positive. All right, so the denominator just naturally is never equal to 0, which means that the second rational function has the domain of all real numbers. Okay, let's talk about what happens to the graph at those x values that are not in the domain, at those x values where the denominator is equal to zero. So there's two possibilities that we're gonna look at. First, we'll look at the possibility that your function has a vertical asymptote. We've seen pictures of this before, but now we're gonna define it a little more carefully. If you're evaluating a rational function f at a particular x value, and it gives you an expression of the form c over zero, where you have a non-zero real number c on top, and you have a zero on the bottom, well, that means that your function's going to be, your outputs are going to be heading towards either positive infinity or negative infinity. Because the denominator is getting super, super tiny, really close to zero, like 0 0.0001, and your denominator is heading towards some larger number. And so overall, that fraction's going to explode to either positive or negative infinity. So, a little more carefully, we say that the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote for f of x. If, as x approaches a from the left, your outputs are approaching positive or negative infinity, and as x approaches a from the right, your outputs are approaching positive or negative infinity. So to draw a picture of this, if this is the x value of a, let me just put a dotted line to represent that vertical asymptote. If your function's getting really, really close, or heading off towards infinity as it gets close to a from the left, 
and is also heading towards an infinity as it approaches from the right. Let's say it goes down to negative infinity. This is what it looks like to have a vertical asymptote at A. Okay. Let's do a couple more examples. Identify the vertical asymptotes in the following graphs. So they're not drawn in here, but we can see exactly where they occur, just sort of based on where the graph jumps. It sort of jumps here, looks like at negative 2. And then again here, I think it looks like at 1. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. and at x equals 1. Okay, so that's how we find them just by sort of visual inspection. Um, how about this second function? Does the function 3 over x squared plus x minus 12 have vertical asymptotes? Well, according to the last page, we want any x value where the numerator is some non-zero number and the denominator is zero. So we're looking for any x values that are going to give you a non-zero on top and a zero on the bottom. So what we're going to do, just like before, is we're going to rewrite this with the denominator being factored. Let's see, I need to multiply to negative 12 and add up to positive 1. So x plus 4 and x minus 3 should work. Setting each of those factors equal to 0 and solving tells me that this function is undefined at negative 4 and at 3. Now, if I were to try and evaluate the function at those x values, f of negative 4 is going to give me 3 over 0, and f of 3 is also going to give me 3 over 0. Because this is of the form non-zero over 0, that indicates to me that I have a vertical asymptote at vertical asymptote x equals negative 4, and at x equals 3. Okay. Great. So now we have an idea of how to look for vertical asymptotes when we're given the f some sort of a rational function. But the question is, what if you had a 0 in the denominator, but you also had a 0 in the numerator? In that case, it's possible that your function has a whole. Okay. So if evaluating a rational number at a particular x value a gives you an expression of the form 0 over 0, then a is, I should be careful here, usually, well, okay, no. So this is true. f is going to be of the form x minus a times some other function over x minus a times some other function. In other words, when you factor the numerator and the denominator, both of those should have a factor of x minus a. And so what this tells us is that it's undefined at a. Um, it's not necessarily going to be a vertical asymptote. It's most likely that you'll have a hole there. So I should say probably has a hole. Probably has a hole at a. Um, we can talk about an example where it doesn't have a hole at a. All right. um, but to, to give you some examples... Let's look at the function x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. The only place that this function is undefined is when the denominator is equal to 0. There's nothing to factor here. The only time this is equal to 0 is when x minus 3 is equal to 0, which is at x equals 3. So our domain is going to be all real numbers except for 3. And so at 3, we either have a vertical asymptote or a hole. So I'm just going to plug in into this function and see, do I get non-zero over zero, or do I get zero over zero? Well, plugging in three is going to give me three squared minus nine over three minus three. That's zero over zero. And so I have a whole at x equals three. They want us to find the graph here, and in a way we kind of can. So let me just really quickly erase this here. Right, zero, again, 0 over 0 indicated that we had a hole. I can rewrite this f of x function in a factored form as, let me just use a different color, f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. 
And this is going to be a function that looks, right, if we think about canceling this out, we can't really cancel them because 3 is not in the domain and we need to keep that there to indicate that. But if we could cancel them everywhere else, then this is just going to be the same graph as the function f of x equals x plus 3. Right, f of x equals x plus 3 is a linear function with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. The only difference is at x equals 3, there's a hole. 1, 2, 3. So on this graph, when x is equal to 3, instead of having a point there, we should just have a hole. So otherwise, the graph of the function looks the same. It looks like the function f of x equals x plus 3. But because we have this extra factor of x minus 3 on the top and on the bottom, that gives us a hole in this graph when x is equal to 3. Okay, now let's do one more example down here. Find any vertical asymptotes or holes of the function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 6. I'm going to factor this. So the numerator I can factor to x plus 2 times x minus 1. And the denominator I can factor to, let's see, multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. So x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, let's make sure that that works, adds up to negative 1. Okay, this looks good. All right, now the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers except for when the denominator is equal to 0. So when x plus 2 is equal to 0, that means that negative 2, this function is undefined. And when x minus 3 is equal to 0, or at x equals 3, it's undefined. So it's, our domain is all real numbers except for negative 2 and 3. And so this function is either going to have a hole or an asymptote at each one of these x values. We just want to figure out which one it is. So what I'm going to do is think about what would happen if I tried to plug in negative 2 into this function. Well, if I plug negative 2 into this function, I'd get a 0 on the top and on the bottom. That's going to give us a hole at x equals negative 2. And if I plugged 3 into this function, I'll get, let's see, 3 plus 2 times 3 minus 1. That's 5 times 2. That's 10 over 0. So because it's non-zero over zero, this tells me I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Okay, so one quick thing that I want to address before I go on. Here we saw that, or I mentioned that we have a hole. I should have drawn a picture. A hole at a looks like this. We have a hole if you have an x minus a in the numerator and in the denominator. That's usually going to indicate a hole. The only time that it's not is if your function looks like, let's say, I'm going to give you the factored version of this. Let's say I have a factor of x minus 2 in the top and in the bottom. And maybe I have some other factors here like x plus 4. Maybe I have another factor down here, x plus 5. But let's say I had one more factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. In a sense, it seems like you have a hole here at x equals 2, because if you plugged in 2, you'd get 0 on top and 0 on the bottom, except for the fact that we have an extra factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. So this is just one special case to look out for. In this particular case, even though f of 2 is going to give you 0 over 0, I shouldn't write equal here because it's not really defined at 2, but evaluating the function at 2 gives you 0 over 0. It's not going to be a whole, it's actually going to be an asymptote because you have an extra factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. In other words, if we think about canceling these, we still have a non-zero over 0 when x is equal to 2. So this is going to give you a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 not a whole. It's just one quick thing to look out for.